make World Series every season, get more flawless runs in Battle Royale, and never be that person again in co-op. What's up, everyone? I want to show you my hitting tips for MLB The Show 24. I've been playing MLB The Show since it came out in 2006, and my hitting tips video last year did extremely well, and I can guarantee you this will not be the only hitting tip video you watch, and it should not be the only hitting tip video you watch. Uh, the reason I say that is there's so many content creators out there that have good tips that they can offer you, and if you go across all their videos and watch all of them, and sure, it'll take some time, and you'll need some patience to do it, you will pick up at least one thing that will improve your hitting from every single one of those videos and every one of those content creators. And I think you should do that. So like I said, this should not be the only hitting tip video you watch. Now, my hitting tip video last year did very well in terms of people engaging and throwing comments back at the video uh, in a positive manner and in, in some critical manners where they added more advice uh, to my own advice in the video. And I was very happy about that. Um, I think that video holds up still because they did not change the hitting engine too much from 23 to 24. So if you want to go back and watch some of that as well and pick up on some hitting tip strategies that you'll see in there, uh, feel free to do so. So I'm going to go through a lot of things here. And typically the longer hitting tip videos are better than the shorter ones. I know a lot of you probably want a quick fix. Like I don't want to sit here and watch an hour long video just so I can hit the ball. Now, there are some tips in here that would definitely help you instantaneously after watching improve your hitting and the way you try to win games in MLB The Show. However, like I said, I really think some of the longer videos that I've watched and even the one I made last year, which was about 44 minutes, and I wish it could have been shorter, um, I felt there's a lot of things I should not have left out, and I'm glad I didn't um, because the, the feedback was very positive towards it. So... The reason you want to get better at hitting is simply because the game is more enjoyable when you're good at hitting. There's, there's no secret to that. So this getting better at hitting, using these tips, you will definitely enjoy the game more. I can, I can promise you that. If you get even a little bit better at hitting, you will enjoy the game a little bit more. Now, whether your goal is to be a top 50 player, a thousand rated ranked player, or make World Series every season, or just to jump up higher in the rankings um, for what you're used to and get more wins than losses, obviously, then this video will definitely help you get that. So part of the video is gonna be also teaching you guys how to adjust from jumping difficulties in the game. So going from All-Star to Hall of Fame, for example, Hall of Fame to Legend, and you know the lower tiers as well, R Rookie to Veteran and Veteran to All-Star. I typically make World Series and Ranked Seasons a, a few times a year, and if you look at the percentage of people that play the game and the fraction of people that actually make World Series and then go even further and make a thousand rate it. It's, um, it's very, very small. It's almost like, I think it's like 1% or something less than 1% get above, um, a thousand rate it. And then 900 rate is world series. It's also a very small percentage of people who make that. That's not to say that I'm, I'm special or anything. It's actually a little bit easier to do it in the beginning of the year and the very end of the year. However, that is really just to indicate how many people play this game globally. So if you're not making World Series, series, you should not be upset with yourself for not doing that. Um, there's several seasons where I don't make it and I try to. And like I said, the point of saying that is to show you how many people play this game. All right, several millions of people play it and it makes it that much harder to get higher up in the rankings. Hopefully these tips will alleviate a lot of your frustration that you might be having while trying to hit the ball. If you feel like you're swinging at everything, or if you feel like your timing is good, but you can't touch the ball, or you can't make solid contact, or you feel like you're really inconsistent game to game, um, then this is going to help you get better at all of that. So it's going to be timing, um, you know, placement of your bat and barrel. So we'll go through all of that. Um, like I said, please check out the other content creators in their hidden tips video so you can hit, pick up points from them as well. All right. And again, if you have more to add on to this, um, please feel free to drop it in the comments, okay? Now, like I said, while I may not be a thousand rated or top rated player, top 50 or any of that, um, I think you can learn a lot from, from anyone. Um, and I feel that I can share my visual strategies and mental sayings that will really carry you throughout at bats in this game. So before we get in, into the, the tips, which will help you no matter what, I do think using the best equipment for this will help you online especially since this game is a reaction game it really tests your reactions and i know a lot of other video games 
probably need this type of equipment that I'm about to tell you right now. Um, but it's baseball. Hitting a baseball is hard in real life, and it is a simulation game for the most part. So it's going to be hard to hit the ball on the screen as well. Now, I think you should use a gaming monitor. Any gaming monitor will be good, but just make sure that it's 120 hertz. Okay, that's really important for the input and what you see on the screen timing up with your actual reactions, right? You want it to be as close as possible to the reaction time that you're putting into when you're pressing the button on your controller, okay? Now, uh, the other thing I would recommend, I don't think I would be able to go back to just using my controller the way it was before I added this one modification, and that is a control freak, all right? A control freak is this little slip-on analog stick um, grip. All right, it's a grip, but it, what it does is more importantly is it actually raises the the total you know dimension of your analog stick, so it gives you more range with less movement. Okay, the other reason I find just using the analog stick without one of these is the grip itself is not that great, and the grip wears off on the analog stick. Um, so you can buy these when these wear out, but you get a pretty long time use out of them before they actually do uh, wear off. So the rubber. Is, it's pretty sticky, um, but it's just this little thing that goes on top. Control Freak is spelled with a K, so it's K-O-N-T-R-O-L, and then Freak is F-R-E-E-K. I'll put it down in the description below, but uh, you want to get one of those. There's some off-brand ones. I like the Control Freaks the best. They have different styles, all right? They have different styles for thumb grips, and if you try out different ones, you might like um, a certain one over another one. So a lot of this stuff that we'll go into in the game, in my settings, is actually preference. And that is definitely one thing in his preference too. There's also something called precision rings. I tried them, I don't like them. A lot of people use them and then a lot of really good players who play this game use them. So just because I don't like them doesn't mean you should not try them. Precision rings are a small ring that will go around the analog stick and it will slip down to the bottom of it. So that will keep your stick from flying all the way up to the top or bottom all right so you won't slam your pci as they say and i'm going to go into what pci means in a little bit but the precision ring for me i didn't like it because it took a while to wear it in and before you wear it in it's really hard to field it, and it makes a huge difference believe it or not so when there's a fly ball hit and you're trying to sprint towards it I found it very hard to get a good jump and sprint with the analog stick that was one big reason too the other reason is I just felt that if I was, I felt comfortable enough with my hitting without the precision ring that I didn't want to get used to that piece of equipment. Um, now, like I said, the control freak, I don't think I could go back to using the normal analog stick without a control freak. So I didn't want to get used to another piece of equipment to rely on. Now that will not help you stop swinging at balls all the way in the dirt or two, three feet above your head or a ball that's about to hit your plier. Those things might not help you with that. So I'm going to go into this video now and show you how to stop doing that. All right. Every hitting tips video you come across, they will tell you to go into a custom practice. Yes, I'm going to do the same thing. Now, I'm also going to show you some other ways you can do it outside of custom practice and ways to adjust to difficulty ratings. All right. But first, we're going to go into custom practice because that is crucial to improving your hitting if you're really trying to get better, all right? So you just, we have to do it. In order to get to custom practice, I'm going to start at the home menu and just go down. So you click down on the D-pad and we have to keep going down. All right, instant action, custom practice. When setting up the practice, I like to go against a team with good pitchers. And a lot of the good pitchers are either on the all-star teams, NL and AL, or you can go against some legend teams. Legend teams are players that are not active anymore. So you have the Greg Maddox, Randy Johnsons, and, you know, uh, Willie Mays for the hitters and things like that. You have the Groundbreakers, the Boomers, and the Beasts. So I would go with one of these teams. Uh, we'll just go with... All right, and then for hitting, you can use anyone you want. But since a lot of this is going to be geared towards Diamond Dynasty... I'm also going to use a legend team for that so that we can get used to hitting with the legends in Diamond Dynasty as well. So uh, we'll go with the Boomers. There's Eddie Murray right there. 
doesn't matter what stadium you choose. Um, I'll get into the stadiums a little bit later in terms of what you need to do to get either more home runs, less home runs, or just a smooth gameplay. We'll go over that. But for now, setting up the practice, it doesn't matter what stadium we go to, okay? So now we're here in custom practice. First thing we're going to go into is the, our settings. I'm going to go pick the settings that I typically use and I like. And again, this is all preference. Please play around with different settings to see if you like something else. What I would recommend is whatever difficulty you're playing on, whatever difficulty you're used to hitting on, just go one difficulty above it, okay? And later on when we play a different game mode, I'm actually going to drop down and go one difficulty below it. So that's going to matter in terms of adjusting to different difficulties. For now, in practice, I'm going to go one difficulty up. So I like, I normally play ranked on Hall of Fame, you know, until you get the World Series, that's when you're playing on Legend. And I'm going to choose Legend. It's the highest difficulty in the game. There are some things you can do to make this even harder, and those are called sliders. Back on the home screen, if you adjust the sliders, uh, specifically on pitch velocity, the velocity and break, you can change that to make it even harder than a typical Legend difficulty would be. So... I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just going to keep it simple. What I do for my camera, I think the first setting we should go to is camera. I'm going to use strike zone high. I have made World Series using other cameras, and some people swear by a camera mode being um, imperative to their performance. I think it does matter, but it's, I still think it's more preference. I believe, I truly believe you could get used to and condition your brain to any camera mode and hit well on any camera. However, I have adjusted to strike zone high. I used to be adjusted to catcher far, which is my pitting, which is my pitching view, as you can see right there. All right, so catcher far used to be called the show 16. I'm just going to apply that to show you. Now, the other thing in settings is I want you guys to try using a plate coverage indicator or a PCI. The PCI is just the little emblem that moves around and basically shows you where your bat is going to be swinging through the zone when you hit the ball. All right. A lot of people actually prefer to use it off, but if you want to get good and a lot of top players, and I don't really see a lot of good players not use the PCI, so I want you guys to at least try using the PCI. Okay. PCI, if we go to offense, I believe... Control, offense. Um, there's a couple things we'll go over here. So, your swing input should be buttons and your hitter, hit, hitter interface should be zoom. Don't do anything else. Zone is the easiest way to do it. And if you want to actually get good at hitting, you want to use the easiest settings. All right. Timing doesn't really allow you to barrel up the ball as much. It solely relies on the timing input of your buttons. And directional, I, I honestly don't even understand directional. I've seen people try it. It's not that easy. Let's go with zone. PCI anchor. So this is something I'll show you after we get into the PCI. Okay. Now you can turn the play cover, coverage indicator off, but I'm going to leave PCI on. Center. I like to go with a bat. What I used to use was diamonds, and I always use a wedge for the inner. Sometimes I take the wedge off depending on how I'm feeling. If I'm in a slump, if I'm not in a slump, and I feel like I'm hitting the ball well or difficulty that matters so this inner preference changes for me and again like i said it's it's all preference and you can change that if you want outer uh, i leave off but i'll show you what it is so in outer we have outline inner we have uh since the inner or since we have the outer on i'm going to leave the inner on as basic pci color this doesn't matter it's preference again and transparency or opacity is also your preference, but I like to do either 60 or 70%, and I like to do either cyan or blue, or some sort of uh, spring green, blue green type. Um, a lot of people use yellow, though, so I'm just going to start with yellow. I uh, guess pitch off, vibration off. Alright. And let's hop into it. Practice type, we want to change the batting, if it's not already batting. And what you can do with this is... Um, change the pitch frequency, or if you don't want them to throw any of these pitches, you can completely turn them off. So the slider bar that I'm moving back to the beginning is the pitch frequency. 
If I want him to throw a lot of curveballs, I'll move this all the way to the right. If I don't want him to throw any curveballs, back here. And then in the middle will be a normal amount of curveballs. All right, so I want him to throw none of these pitches. I just want the fastball right now. All right, we got Roy Halladay on the bump. I'm going to change Roy Halladay real quick to someone who has a sinker. And I think that's going to matter a lot because sinkers are one of the hardest pitches to hit in the game, depending on the location. Now, you can also select certain locations if you're struggling with location. I'm going to leave all of these on. But if you want to turn specific spots on, you can select it like I am. And when the box turns pink, that means the pitcher will throw more pitches in that area. So if I select this selection I have right now, Mike Messina is going to throw more pitches on the inside part of the zone only. That's it. He's only going to throw it there. If I select it here, he'll throw it a little bit. And I'm assuming this is a right-handed. Yeah, we have Ricky Henderson at the plate. Right-handed batter. He'll throw inside the zone and uh, far inside the zone for balls. All right, so I'm going to turn all these off. And when I do that, he'll just throw it wherever. All right. Okay, so this yellow circle in the middle here is the PCI, plate coverage indicator. All right, that's the settings we used. The parenthesis-looking things in the middle, that's the inner PCI. The outer PCI is the other four curved lines that make up the circle. And then the dots in the middle are the diamonds that we selected. Again, it's all preference. I personally don't like this, especially on a difficulty like Legend where the ball is very hard to hit and the PCI will actually shrink. You want something um, a little less visually distracting than this one. Now, if you're struggling to hit the ball at all, I would definitely use something a little bit, you know, bigger like this one. And my timing on that pitch was good. I just, I was using my left hand to, I don't know, describe it. So I wasn't, I didn't have my hand on the PCI analog stick. But anyway, this is going to be preference for you. I personally will change it. Now, this is what I use. I'm going to go with Ocean. Take off the inner PCI. Sorry, no. Change the inner PCI to wedge and change the outer to none. Change the diamond center to a bat. So this will actually mimic a real bat. All right. The other thing about this is you notice you can see Ricky Henderson's entire batting stance. And you can see a lot of the field out there. Um, you can see his swing. Now, this is the hitting view I used for a while. But... I stopped using this because I, you know, took a break from the game, came back and changed my hitting view and just simply got used to it. Now, if you're struggling to see the ball, your eyes aren't that good, you want to uh, use something a little bit closer. Now, if you really like seeing the batter stance and swing, um, then you might sacrifice your, your hitting view a little bit. But like I said, you can get used to any hitting view. So that might be the one for you. All right. I do like seeing the stance and swing, but I already got used to this hitting view, which is strike zone high, and I really like it. It's a little bit closer, easier on my eyes, um, and as I get older, I kind of need that, but eyes are still good. Just when you get older, you're going to lose some, you know, elasticity in your eyes and sight, and you might want to change your hitting view. Again, if you're in a slump, changing your hitting view helps too. If you're just simply in a slump, trying something new might help you get out of the slump. All right, so this is the hitting view that I use now, strike zone high. Every swing, I want you guys to look at the bottom left corner of the swing uh, screen. There is going to be a feedback box. All right, the feedback box is going to show you a lot of things. You have the player's attributes, 99 contact against right-handed pitchers, uh, 73 power against right-handed pitchers, and 91 vision. Those stats matter. If you're playing on Legend, you really want contact and vision mostly to help you with hitting, all right? Just hitting the ball all together. And if they have to sacrifice some power for that, it might be worth it if you're trying to go up in difficulties, okay? So if you're struggling on a new difficulty, I would look for players who have high vision and high contact. Contact and vision are attribute stats that can go up to as far as 125. So 99 and 91 are still pretty good um, for this player. Now, the other thing about the feedback is You'll notice the last pitch, I had good timing. And on this pitch, it says just early. The timing will show up at the bottom of the plate right there where it shows you your swing replay. Now, if you notice, there's a little meter there. It goes from red to yellow. And that is your timing window. Now, the attribute that affects timing windows is vision. Lower vision, lower timing window, which means a lower green area right there. A couple of other things affect vision and that is the pitcher's attributes. If a pitcher has a high 
hits per nine or strikeout per nine, that's going to affect timing windows against certain players as well. Okay. Now, the other thing is it'll show you where you put your PCI when you hit the ball or your barrel of the bat. That's on the right part. Okay. So it shows that it threw a knuckle curve at 77 miles per hour. Down below that where it says EV, 89 miles per hour is how hard the ball was hit off of the bat. 89 miles per hour is not that hard, but for a knuckle curve, um, it's also not that soft. If this was a fastball I hit, that would be pretty soft for a fastball since his fastball comes in anywhere from 91 to 96 miles per hour. So typically you want to hit the ball a little bit harder than the ball is coming in. So 89 uh, is not that hard. Now, the PCI, is, the center dot is on top of the ball, meaning it's a little bit higher than it. And I was a little bit over, and that's why I got the ground ball to the left. All of that comes into play with your result and where the ball actually goes, okay? Believe it or not, the pitch type affects the way the ball is hit and where the PCI is placed. So sliders and breaking balls, curveballs with spin, believe it or not, it will look different in the result and where the ball goes and, you know, whether you hit a home run off of that pitch or not, than it will with a fastball or a sinker, okay? Sometimes you can get away with hitting sinkers and fastballs a little bit off, um, or curveballs and sliders a little bit off, but in different areas. So this wasn't off the inside part of the bat. Um, it wasn't exactly on the barrel. It was closer to the inside part of the bat, um, but definitely not the end of the bat. So even though it kind of looks like that in that window. So actually it was off the end of the bat because it was early. So that's important to remember. We don't have to get into it too much, but the launch angle was uh, negative five degrees. So that just means it was negative five degrees off the bat impact of the bat. Okay. Now. Now, another thing I want to show you is the PCI anchor. So we have it on preset, and that is basically going to give us a grid of 3x3. Three three. All right, 3x3 three three grid you see there, and that basically means you can anchor your PCI to one of those spots. Is that going to go? All right, we just did a home run. <laughs> um, I don't see the, the feedback there, but I'm holding down R2. All right, and I'm going to show you guys. Let me get up another camera so you can see my controller real quick. All right, so I have the, the camera controller right below. Uh, you can see it on the left part of the screen here. Um, now, what I want to show you is if you click the analog stick here, it will allow you to anchor your PCI to a certain part of the zone. And if you have the preset setting on, it will just give you this 3x3 three three grid where you can anchor the PCI. So if you see, I have to do it down here. If I'm struggling with pitches on the inside part of the plate, um, high and in, low and in, and I just want to keep my PCI there to get a kind of a advantage or a head start, I can anchor it there and you'll see it actually ends up right there. All right. So that's where it is. Now, I like to do the free anchor gameplay settings, go to offense and then change the PCI anchor to free. That allows me to basically anchor it, anchor the PCI anywhere. Uh, within the zone and even like just outside that grid that we saw before okay so now if i click i can put it even lower and a little bit further outside that grid that we saw previously okay that's pretty much it for settings guys um this chapter was it's basic stuff every single hitting tips video you go through will go through everything i went through and probably a little bit more what i'm going to get to do now is some of the strategies i go through and this is the part that's really going to help you, I think. Okay. Please remember this. Taking pitches is just as important as hitting balls in the zone. All right. Seeing a lot of pitches will help you understand the timing that the balls are coming into the zone and the pitcher's throwing them. All right. Not only that, part of hitting is not hitting. Taking balls and getting on base. A lot of people will complain that, oh my God, this guy's not throwing strikes. I just want to hit the ball. The reason I got on the game is so I can hit the ball. I'm telling you guys, take your strikes and you will also get better at hitting the ball when it is time to hit, okay? Even taking strikes, and I think I said that, I meant to say take balls, but taking strikes is also important. If I'm just pretending that this count right now is 0-0, early in the game, first inning, I'm taking pitches because I want to understand that pitch to me looked like it was going to be in the zone. I was like, all right, whatever, I'll be down 0-1. It ended up being below the zone. So a lot of times you just need to take pitches to understand visually what it's going to look like when it actually crosses the zone into the catcher's mitt. OK, 
Okay, so that's the first thing. The, the telling or saying I always use for myself, and I hope you guys use sayings like this too, is it's a ball before it's a strike. Now what that means is when the pitcher throws it, he has to get it in the zone. All the pressure's on him. It's sort of like saying uh, a person's innocent until proven guilty, right? I just say it's a ball until it's a strike. So for me, I'm thinking in my head, this pitcher is trying so hard to get into the small strike zone, all right? He's not focused on, on you and the hitter and trying to strike you out. He's just trying to get strikes in the zone when he needs to. Now, since it's a video game, it's a little different. They can focus on the, uh, the opponent. Um, but taking balls, taking pitches in the zone is also important. Now, the second thing is I like to tell myself and remember, especially when I'm getting in a, sh uh, a slump or I'm getting too focused on the pitcher and I start getting um, tunnel vision, is that the distance between me and the pitcher will always exist. If that sounds weird, I'll elaborate on it. What I mean, uh, what I'm trying to basically um, combat in my head is the feeling that the pitcher is like right on top of the plate. Okay. Now, real life baseball players will describe that feeling with pitchers like Felix Bautista, Randy Johnson, obviously tall pitchers with a large presence on the mound. Okay. Uh, that's because the point of them releasing the ball is a lot closer to the plate. It just feels like as soon as they throw the ball, uh, you have to swing if it's going to be a strike. Now, obviously, if it's not a strike, you don't want to swing, but you have such little time to react that you feel like you have to swing as soon as they release the ball. All right. Now, a lot of this, a lot of hitting is timing more so than it is of the PCI. Um, but like I said, remember those two things. It's always a ball before it's a strike. And the distance between you and the pitcher will always exist. So I literally try to look at that. Now, a lot of people will ask top players uh, like Kreiner, Zazzy, and, you know, Will Z, all those guys, Chet, Ochev. Um, where do you look at when the pitch is coming in or where, when the pitcher is going through his windup or his stretch? This, to me, changes on a regular basis so that I can avoid going into a slump. Because if you don't change it, your eyesight will get stagnant and you're always going to focus on the same spot. That's just my preference. I oscillate between a couple of different visual strategies. And one of them is, yes, focusing on the pitcher's hat because he's going to release the ball right next to it. That's not my favorite one. Sometimes I actually like to look at the mound right where the grass is, and I'll look at his legs. I don't try to focus too much on the legs because you want to keep your peripheral vision intact throughout the entire pitch. Everywhere from his windup to the point where he's releasing the ball to where the pitcher is coming across the pitch is coming across the zone into the catcher's mitt, all right? Because that's what a pitch is. It's not just throw the ball and then it's coming in. It's the entire sequence. If you notice the pitcher, and I've, I've heard a couple of people say this, and I can't verify if it's true, it's not in the game manual, but if a pitcher on the mound in this game has a quicker pace, that means he's throwing a one of his pitches with higher velocity. So if it seems like he's going through his windup a little bit faster, that means it might be a fastball or a sinker. If it looks like it's a little bit slower, it might be a changeup or curveball or something like that. I can't verify that, but even if you don't think that's true, the point is if you're paying attention to the entire pitcher's windup, all right, without getting too focused on it on the pitcher, you will have a better chance of timing pitches that are hard to hit. All right, so a good vis visual strategy you can use as well is splitting up the zone. And there's a couple different ways to split up the zone. If you want to split it up into thirds, there's two ways to do that. You can split it up as the inner third, the middle third, and the outer third. Or, if you want, or you could split it up as the lower half, the middle half, and the upper half. Or third, I'm sorry. The lower third, middle third, and the upper third. Okay. Uh, this way, you can... Pick, be a little bit pickier with your pitches um, if you're better at hitting a certain part of the zone or if the pitcher's wild you can only look for pitches let's say on the inner third all right i just want to focus on the inner third realize that the other third is here and in an oo count i'm only looking for a pitch on the inner third if the count changes i'll change my strategy and i'll get rid of the thirds and i'll just keep the entire strike zone you know in my view so you can also split it into quadrants upper left up and away, 
uh, down and away and low and in. Okay, we're up and in, low and in. You can also split the zone in half, top and bottom, or left and right, inside, outside. All right, so splitting up the zone is really, like I said, it's, it helps for being pickier with pitches. Um, it just helps with kind of uh, struggle, you know, if you're struggling to hit certain parts of the zone, just focus on one area where you think the pitcher's gonna throw it, or, or where you're gonna protect. If you're struggling with pitches inside, split it up the zone in half. All right, and pick this half. Um, if you're struggling with pitches down below the zone and you're swinging too many pitches in the dirt, all right, pick the lower half, all right, focus on the lower half, and you'll be able to pick up on those pitches that might dive down below the zone a little bit more, okay? And I would recommend doing this, splitting up the zone early in the count, so that you can pick pitches you actually want to hit, all right? If there's runners on base, all right, and there's less than two outs, if there's a runner on first, I'm looking low, and I'm, I'm avoiding the low pitches. If he throws it below this line with a runner on first and less than two outs, I don't care if it's a strike on the first pitch of the at-bat. I don't care if I go down 0-1. Sometimes I really don't care if I go down two strikes. I don't want to ground into a double play. As the count changes, I can change where I put that line or just get rid of it altogether. Okay. So that is a big visual strategy you can use. All right, so timing, I, I'm going through a lot of this before I get into the controller stuff and my grip and everything. Timing really comes down to your visual strategies, your mental strategies, and um, literally your your thumb and how quickly you can press the button. Now what I do in like my first game of the day or something to warm up is I tap the swing button to know what that feeling feels like. To know what it feels like to actually swing the, you know, hit the swing button. All right. Um, you just can't remember the literal things that go on when you're playing this game. All right. And that's your, your brain to hand con connection when you're using the controller. So I like to warm it up to get the blood flowing in my thumb to know what it feels like. And so that when I'm timing, I'm making every swing count when I actually go to swing. All right. So I don't want to do it too much to get swing happy, but you see there's good timing and I'm only worried about timing right now. To focus on timing and build your confidence up, it may be worth it to change the pitch type. Um, so you go to batting again. If I just want fastballs and sinkers because those are hard to hit, um, that will help you focus on your timing for fastballs and sinkers. Now, another thing that will help with timing, solely timing, is just selecting certain pitches in a certain area. All right, not going too far. So I'm only going right in here. All right, so I'm pressing the button to warm up. All right, and I just want to focus on my timing. That timing was bad, so I want to improve that. Again, this is legend. This is the hardest one. Um, but, like, just focus on timing to start. All right, that's a nice line drive right there. So what I'm looking for in this while I'm practicing just fastballs and sinkers, and what I'm trying to do is make a connection to... What feels comfortable in terms of swinging the bat from when the pitcher releases it to when the ball is coming in? Like, what works for me? Am I am I getting ready to swing when he puts his foot down into the ground and throws the ball? Or am I getting ready just after that? Am I looking at Ricky Henderson's leg kick and the way he gathers himself? All right, because that also matters. Now, this is in the game manual, I believe, that when the player puts his foot down... All right, as soon as his foot touches the ground, that's about when you should swing. It's not going to be easy to actually focus on that, but with some training, you can do it in your peripherals. There is one player in particular I have to do it with, and that's Jimmy Fox. Jimmy Fox, uh, I don't think he has a great card in the game yet, or if he's even in it, but he had a card in 23. Each player has a different light kick. Jimmy Fox, his timing mechanism was actually more of his hands. He would bring his hands back and swoop them under... And that's what you want to focus on. He also had a light kick, but you can train your peripheral vision to be able to time that up with the player's leg kick so that you don't have to actually look at the player's leg kick because that's impossible. You want to be looking you want to be looking at the area in front of the plate. You want to be looking a little bit at the zone, a little bit at the pitcher, and moving your eyes around. Um, generally moving your eyes around so you don't get too fixated. Okay. What some people do is they like to track the ball. So they'll track it right from where the pitcher throws it. All right, and they will move it down. Tracking is good if you're really struggling 
uh, to hit the ball, in my opinion. Okay? But, again, all of this is going to be preference. Please try out all different types of strategies. I'm going through as many as I can think of. So you can see now, since I moved to tracking, it's been working extremely well. Two perfects, and a home run, and almost another home run. Alright. So, <laughs> hit his wrist. Typically, I don't like tracking, but you can do that. That's where you start the PCI. Alright. Now, now that we've seen a lot of fastballs and sinkers, we're getting good at hitting them, and that's kind of what you want after you see a lot of them. Um, I'll go into where I place the PCI, but before I get before I get into that, actually, I want to do something that's going to aid that, and that's my controller grip. Okay, there's a couple ways to grip it, and I change this sometimes. But the most important thing with hitting is being comfortable. Literally, like not just in your head being comfortable, but your chair, your arms, your hands, like the the settings around you want to be comfortable as well. All right. So I typically do a lot better at hitting when I'm relaxed, when I don't have my arms on the armrest, I'm not leaning one way, leaning against the armchair. Um, to me, that just means I'm using too much force on one side of the controller. And if I'm leaning on something, leaning against the desk, if I have the controller anywhere else besides right here on my lap in a comfortable, relaxed position, um, I usually don't hit as well, okay? So I like to keep it here, keep my arms in a comfortable, you know, literally keep my arms like with a certain distance from each other i don't think about it too much but i don't want to be like i said i don't want to be leaning on one side um that usually throws off your hitting pretty pretty good all right so grip there's a couple of different ways to grip the analog stick now i learned this one from mr gravy it's called the claw grip you might have heard it in other video games that it's good for the claw grip is basically taking your hand like this all right you want to rest the left side of the controller on your left hand all right and then you can wrap it around sometimes i like to put two fingers behind the, the l2 button sometimes i like to do um just the pinky or sometimes i really don't even put any fingers and i'm kind of just pressing the controller into my left hand but again you don't want to do that to support it i like to support it like this not like pressing the controller into itself um, but sometimes i do do that by accident now there's two different ways to do the claw grip you can do it like this, like it actually looks like a claw. Or, now, the hardest thing actually is hitting a, a fastball right in the middle, to be honest, because you actually almost want to completely let go of your BCI. Um, that's really, really hard to do sometimes. Uh, but the other part of the claw drip, grip is leaving these two fingers almost flat. So it's like this, instead of this. All right, and that helps me get the top and bottom. And I'm not straining my hand too hard. But if it does feel like you are, you might just have to get used to it a little bit, or you just want to, um, you just want to kind of loosen it up, all right, or just let some tension off of your wrist muscles, okay? So sometimes I do like to do the claw grip if I feel that my timing's really good, I'm seeing the ball well, but for some reason I can't get the PCI to go where it needs to be, and it, I can't pinpoint exactly why. That's when I'll change, change grips from either just the thumb to the claw grip or the claw grip back to the thumb. Okay, so changing that sometimes helps. So go ahead and try the claw grip if you think um, it'll help. If not, just try it in practice mode. I think it's uh, beneficial to at least try different ways of using the analog stick. Okay, so the claw grip can help me. I felt like it would help me get from pitches from looking here to get back to here or down here and go up. Um, so I think doing that could benefit you. Now, personally, um, a lot of people just put their thumb on the stick like this right on top of it and move it around. To me, my thumb slips off a lot like that. If your thumb starts to get sweaty or whatever, I feel like it's going to slip off. I actually like to kind of put it on the bottom of the analog stick right here, and I'm actually just using the side of my thumb, all right, not really the, the, the surface, okay? Um, so that does give me less surface area on the analog stick, which actually makes it feel like I'm able to reach different parts of the zone a little easier, okay? Now you'll notice I'm doing something, and this is my personal preference. I like to anchor, instead of tracking from the pitcher's arm where he's throwing up here, even though I'm hitting really well like that, I like to track on the arm side of the pitcher, but down and in in the zone. Just a little down and in. I don't know why, 
But ever since I've did that, I've had so much more success in scoring more runs in games that I could win enough to get the World Series consistent. Okay. Um, so down and in, low down and in is one of the options. All right, we'll go with Gary Carter. All right, you can see his PCI looks a little different. That's based on his ratings, his contact and vision ratings. Um, you might not notice the difference, but to me it looks a little bit smaller and his contact rating at 76 is definitely smaller than Ricky Henderson's. He's got a different stance. It's a little more open. His leg kick looks different. All right. Now, if you're struggling at what I just did right there with throwing the PCI, that's what I call it, throwing the PCI a little too far um, and throwing it above the ball, this, is what I'm about to tell you is really important. So in the same vein that I warm up swinging by pressing the swim button with my timing, I warm up PCI and barrel movement with moving the PCI around pre-pitch. So, right, so I basically do these two things um, until I get comfortable enough in the game where I don't have to. All right, and at that point, it's the first or second inning, I'm still taking a lot of pitches, remember? Now, all these pitches I selected are in the zone. So I'm going to go back and unselect these pitches so we can see more out of the zone. But we're still going to keep it fastball sinker just to, just to show you. All right, so now I want to be able to take balls as well. But pre-pitch, I'm moving this PCI just so I can keep my fingers warmed up. You want them to be loose, all right? But if you're doing this too much, it will also result in moving the PCI too much during your swing. That one was right on it. Timing was way off. But if you do this too much, you know, there's a fine amount of PCI movement you could do pre-pitch and in the game. If I feel like I'm doing it too much and I'm just throwing this wherever I want, I'll just stop moving it for a while and set my anchor in the middle, all right? The, the key to hitting and barreling up balls, if your timing's decent enough, like I said, timing's the first thing you should work on. If you feel like your time is good, um, small movements. Small, small movements in the zone with the PCI. The claw grip is something to help me get used to small movements. Just doing little circles in the zone, all right? A lot of players will warm up by doing these giant movements, a lot of them are already good enough at hitting. All right, but you should be doing small movements if you're ha having trouble swinging at pitches in the zone and your PCI is ending up outside of the zone. All right, so you want to do small movements in the zone. Now, if you're really paying attention with your eyes to where those small movements are going with the PCI in the zone, this will actually help you take more pitches as well because your goal is to only swing at pitches where these small movements go to. If it looks like the pitch is moving outside of that, then don't swing at it. One thing I like to keep in mind for a visual strategy is, imagine the strike zone as a hockey goalie net, okay? It's a hockey goalie net. Everything that comes into the zone, I'm swatting it away. All right, so if there's a curveball and it's starting in, it's starting outside of the zone, but it's coming in, back into the zone, I'm tracking that and I'm just swatting it away, all right? I'm acting like a goalie, and there's people shooting pucks in the net, and I'm just getting it. I'm making sure it doesn't pass through the net or the, you know, the strike zone uh, without me defending it. All right. So sometimes you can view it as that. Now, sometimes people ask me and other hitting tip videos, should I be looking at the ball when I'm hitting? I mean, it seems kind of weird to ask that, but I, I get what you mean. Um, sometimes if you're looking at the ball too much, it feels like you can't really track it that well. I think once you get better at all these other strategies, you can pick up on, you know, fastball sinker slider really early by looking at the ball immediately when it comes out of the, bat, the pitcher's hand. If you start doing that too soon, you'll get fixated on it and you'll find that your timing's off, PCI's off because you're too tunnel vision. But basically, I would say yes, you should be looking at the ball, but also no, because you want to keep your peripherals intact. So I would say it depends. If you feel like you're on a hot streak, I would start picking up on the ball a little bit more, picking up the spin earlier. All right, if you're getting a little bit better. If you're not touching the ball, I would try to keep a little bit more of a zoned out view just to keep your peripherals intact and see where that ball going out of the zone so you can take the balls. Another thing about hitting is if a pitcher or an opponent picks up that you're swinging at everything, they're not going to give you something to hit. They're going to keep throwing balls in the dirt, balls outside the zone, balls way above the zone, um, and balls inside for you to get jammed on or hit foul for free strikes. Okay. 
Now, the one thing to remember about difficulties is the lower you go in difficulty, it is the easier it is to hit balls outside the zone. The bigger the PCI, the bigger the timing windows, and basically the easier it is to hit. And the advantage is all with the hitter, less with the pitcher. Okay. Um, I'll show you some pitching tips in my pitching uh, strategy video, but that hasn't been made yet because we're doing this. So keep in mind if a pitcher's throwing a lot of balls, just keep taking them until he throws it in the zone. If you're swinging at balls outside the zone, maybe it's time to step back, take a breath, maybe just pause for a second, come back in, um, and let him throw his balls until he gets it back in the zone. If you're swinging at pitches like that, he's going to keep throwing pitches like that. It's pretty simple. That's a really good pitch. I took that on purpose, but I, you saw my PCI kind of go over here. If it was a fastball, that's where it would have ended up, and then it went down, and then I laid off of it. I thought it was going to be a ball. I consider that a good take, and I just killed Rob then. I just killed him. So we have to use a different pitcher now. So that was a very small movement I did with my PCI. I was thinking fastball, just ever so slightly saw the change in it, and I didn't move much. And when you're facing a pitcher with an outlier, you should be more focused on the timing than the PCI. Now, you want to focus on both, of course, but you want to focus on visualizing what it would look like and feel like to hit a fastball right down the middle because you don't want to miss those. So a lot of times I anchor towards the middle um, in outlier situations, and then I snap to everywhere else, all right? And I envision it down the middle so that I'm ready for it. I'm looking at the pitcher's leg kick, and I'm basically getting ready to swing as soon as he puts his foot down. Well, not as soon as he puts his foot down, but a little bit after that, of course. Um, so, you know, good PCI there, just too early for sure. That's a good pitch. Types of swings, and I didn't want to show you this till now because you shouldn't be using the other swings. X, and if it's Xbox, just follow the, you know, the placement of my, where I'm pointing to. Um, X is a normal swing. Square is a power swing. Circle is a contact swing. Literally, you should never use contact or power swings, in my opinion. I think the only time I would use one of those swings is a contact swing in a situation on Legend where I absolutely cannot strike out and I already have two strikes on me. I'm just trying to keep the inning alive. It's the last out of the game. I may consider it, but basically, normal swing is your best friend every single time. All right. Power swing is really hard to... Uh, it actually affects your timing, too, with power swings. It's hard to barrel up the ball. All right, if you want to hit for power, just use players with power. Um, I think it's you'll, you'll probably hit more home runs with the normal swing than with power swing anyway, just because you're actually barreling up the ball a little bit better. All right. So again, I went over the claw grip. I went over the two different types of claw grips, how you should relax and um, keep the controller in your hand and how you shouldn't lean on your armchairs. All right, if you do lean, little, lean a little bit forward, but keep it under control. And, and then everything else we went through in on the screen. Um, but those are the basic controller tips I can give you, okay? Now, let's go into Diamond Dynasty. I will say, if you want to get your confidence up, play a game mode that will get you XP. And uh, play it on a low difficulty. If you're struggling on Hall of Fame, play on All-Star. Get those home runs. Um, if you're playing on Legend, play on Hall of Fame, and so forth. All right. Either do Conquest or Mini Seasons. I will say Mini Seasons is a bit of a grind. Um, but for Team Affinity, it might be worth it. All right. So in Mini Seasons, you can play any of these games on any difficulty. So if you're struggling, you know, well, I think in Mini Seasons, if you're just trying to get wins and get through the season as quick as possible, play everything on Rookie. All right. Um, get easy wins and move on. If you want more XP, play All Star. If you want to get the good goals and rewards, you might have to do um, Hall of Fame or Legend and All Star. That's pretty much it. Um, I'm gonna go through some other tutorials throughout the year. I'm gonna do a, a pitching strategy video, pitching settings. I'm gonna go through tutorials on how to do showdowns and the best way to draft a Battle Royale team, um, and then. If you guys want any other tutorials outside of that, please let me know. Again, please, please, please drop some feedback down on this on this video. 
Um, share your comments, what you're thinking. If you have any tips you want to add on to this and what we covered here, I would definitely recommend it. And please and try to enjoy the game as much as possible. Have fun with this game. You're not going to get better unless you're trying to have fun first. Um, it's not worth getting frustrated over. I'm telling you, you'll probably be better if your goal is to have your main goal is to have fun. You'll probably get better that way anyway. So try to enjoy it. Leave some comments down below on this and uh, let me know what you want to see next. Otherwise, uh, I really appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate all the support over the past year. And just remember, I do stream on Twitch. So I do a lot of gameplay on Twitch, rank seasons, co-op, um, battle royale. I play against viewers sometimes. So if you do want to play against me, please hop over to my Twitch and we can um, set a game up and you can play against me. I could teach you some things if you want, um, but do follow me on Twitch if you want to catch more of the action than just these uploads, okay? But I will keep these uploads going. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.